think we are live, Steven. Hmm? Alrighty, it has been a very, very, very long time since I've been live. Um, but first, Happy New Year's. I am live because I wanted to talk about um, just with the new year coming and everything, uh, just talk about my life this previous year and one of the things that um, is really, really important that I wanted to speak about. I had a life or death situation um, or experience so let's start off with the date this was November 9th 2021 around I would say 11 at night um, I was admitted to the ER um, now, before I get into my experience of what was going on, um, I want to explain that I have been born with asthma. Um, now, it's not, it hasn't really um, affected my life growing up. Um, I've been active my whole life. Um, I've, I've been dancing since I was nine still dancing to this day it's never really um been like a thing where i needed an inhaler or needed anything serious um but um uh senior year of college um i my asthma was getting pretty bad um my body was just breaking down and i just weren't able to do the normal things that I normally could do and a lot of people were saying oh it's just allergies you'll grow out of it you'll be fine and I, and I thought that's that's really what was going on was I was developing all these allergies and um, just things were shifting that normally wasn't really a thing um, but I got better I never really had an asthma attack um, until this year, the day after my birthday. Um, yay! <laughs> it's so, like, <sighs> this year, my birthday, just literally, what it just felt like a rebirth, basically. Um, I talk about a lot, I think the life that I'm in now, I just, I have this thing where I just say, I was just re resurrected, basically, I, just, I was reborn, because um, I had such a crazy experience where I just didn't know if I was going to make it. Before, um, I was sent to the ER, I was actually <laughs> teaching a class. Um, I teach, um, I teach a open class at, at Malashock here in San Diego, California. If anybody knows what Malashock is, I teach an adult open class. People come in, um, and it's just a place for you to just feel and, and enjoy and just do whatever you need with no, um, judgment and just, you know, just to be yourself. So, um... I basically was teaching and <clears throat> before I even got to class I was already kind of dealing with um, my asthma. I just was having a hard time breathing normally than I was. Um, I was taking my inhaler way more often than you're supposed to and I thought in my head, I'm like, oh, I'll be fine, I'll take two puffs, I'll be okay. And, like, 30 minutes goes by, 
and I'm just, I'm, I really can't, like, do much than sit and close my eyes and just breathe because I was just, my body was at that point where anything I was doing was just so hard. Normal walking was just starting to become harder than normal. And once I get to my car, I'm just like, high, like I'm breathing really, 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 really hard. Um, trying to like control it, I tend to, when I'm, when I'm having an episode, the, my hardest thing is exhaling. So I'm constantly inhaling really fast and trying to exhale, but my exhale is so short so I feel like I'm gonna soon enough hyperventilate and I have like a fear of hyperventilating. Um, so I'm just like, I'm trying to like control my breathing the best that I can knowing that I have this like limitation to my exhale. But you know, once in a while when you're overly compensating your breathing, it starts to um, affect your back and your chest. So, so I ended up getting home and I'm like right away turn on my machine and everything maybe 10 minutes goes by and I'm like okay this helped a little bit but I'm still struggling like I'm just I don't know what to do I take my emergency inhaler which I hate taking um, I take all my allergy medication and anything else that I need to help and my mom is here trying to help me and she's like can you like you know try to breathe slowly or try to just relax and I literally I was just I was sitting like this just I, I couldn't even I, I can't even relax like how I'm relaxed right now I was so just stiff because my breathing I don't even know how to explain it the breathing was just so hard and after a while after a while I'm thinking maybe I can do it maybe I can do it and then I look over to my mom and it was in that moment where I was like, I don't know what else to do. Like, I d seriously looked at her like, I don't, I, I think I'm going to have an asthma attack. I literally, I don't think I'm going to be able to breathe after this. Like, I, I just panicked. I was just at that point where I didn't know what else to do. Like, I never looked at my mom and was like, help me or I might just be done and so that's where she's like okay she rushes me um, she helps me walk to the car and this is the point where I'm, I'm breathing so much like because I'm trying to do my best to uh, not hyperventilate I'm trying to just be able to breathe as much as I can at that point be able just just to make it to the hospital and she drives me to the hospital I literally can't even uh, walk and so she puts me in a wheelchair takes me to um, the front desk and they're asking me all these questions I literally it's I can now see it but before in that moment I just my eyes were just closed the whole time because the world was just not, I was not taking in anything because my body was so just like falling apart and I just, I, I couldn't breathe. I just was, you know, I was at, at the, the end basically. And so finally they get me, um, I get dressed and I'm still like just waiting. I'm, I'm at this point. I'm just like, just put me on an oxygen machine. Just put me on an oxygen machine. Like I'm just at this point where like you're asking me these questions, and I literally can't even function right now. I'm my voice was getting so hoarse, and I just was 
I've never felt like so weak and never thought that breathing was could be that hard. Um, and so finally they get me into this isolation room and yeah, you know, with COVID and everything it has made like the process a little bit harder and I've had so they had to like um give me a COVID testing and everything and we had to wait like an out like 30 to 40 minutes for the results and thankfully I was negative negative and then finally they uh I have um, IVs in this arm, I have my uh, heartbeat monitor and oxygen level in my other hand, they've taken my blood and everything, um, I was just like, <laughs> pretty much just there, just like, I don't even know, they finally, they put the little, the, the nose thing and a mask on me, and I just sat, and just... pray that I can push through it um, because it was just at that point that I just didn't know if like if this was if if, if what they were giving me was going to be enough because I was dealing with a lot I had shortness of breath my lungs were inflamed first time ever uh, I had really 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 strong chest pain like i've never felt my chest feel so tight two hours within that time i was more i was a little bit more stable so your oxygen level is supposed to be i believe like 94 96 mine was at 88 and that's really really bad so i was just not getting enough oxygen that and um, they also said that my I had to get a chest X-ray as well. So after a while, when they took uh, I was they they were able to take my mask off, my oxygen mask, and um, and I still had the little nose the little nose tubes. And after a sudden, I felt very nauseous as well. I my body felt so I've just never felt that week in my life breathe a little bit better um after like maybe an hour of me being on the oxygen machine but my body hurt like it's not even the body aches that you get from a fever it's not or any of that my body just felt so like just at its end of like functioning it just felt so worn down and um so they come in i finally get my water my mom finally is able to come into my room and um they're constantly checking my oxygen level and it took so long for my oxygen level to even get up to like 92 so time goes past and they're like you know we think that you should stay overnight so we can keep an eye on you and uh, make sure that you're okay to make sure to continue to give you oxygen and things like that so um so I ended up staying overnight at the ER and for the first time in a long time I was actually able to get the best of rest that I've ever gotten in a while. Now I kid you not, I... It was such a big shift of how I felt waking up than going into the ER. Like, I almost forgot that I was even having an asthma attack 
that the next day I felt normal, but the day before I almost like was at its end. I'm just struggling so much just to even like breathe and anything and I kind of was just in in a lot of shock at that point. And um, so the, one of my doctors comes in and she's like, oh, you know, you're ready to go home. We're just going to um, test if you can um, walk, basically. And I could not. I could not. I mean, I could walk, but I was so, I just was like, like this. My legs were just shaking. Um, it almost felt like my legs had been asleep for so long. And um, so I was able to walk fine-ish enough, but... Um, and they checked my oxygen level, my oxygen level was moderate. And so my mom takes me, she puts me in a wheelchair, she discharges me and takes me home. Got food, cause you know, hospital food is gross. I had, they finally gave me apple juice and a sandwich. Like maybe an hour after I like threw up um, that night. A lot of times they kept asking me, do you smoke, do you smoke, do you smoke? and never believed that I don't smoke and the lady told me that my lungs were so bad that basically it was like a, an x-ray of some an, a 60 year old person that smokes and it it's really scary because you think that you're fine? I mean, I am fine, but it's... You don't know until it happens, and it's like... Now is the time that I have, like, I just, I felt lucky again in my life that I was even able to push through that crazy first ever asthma attack and though my lungs are in the process of healing it's just it's so scary that to know that your body just can get to a point that you don't even you don't even know because you think you're fine, you think you're healthy. I just wanted to share um, what has happened to me this past year. I'm just at a place in my life where I'm only going to live fully and cherish everything that I have and be grateful of every moment that I have because anything can trigger me to have another episode. Now, I'm not gonna live in fear, but I want to make sure that I live to the best, you know, of my ability in case there is a potential another attack that I don't push through. And it sucks to say, but I have this thing that you don't always know what is going to happen. You don't always know what's going to trigger it. And this was the first time I've ever even had an attack in my life with asthma. And um, so now I am definitely on the journey of being able to maintain it because that's all I can do I can't get rid of it I can maintain it and now with all these freaking 
things out in the world right now. It is even more scary. Um, but I am going to make sure that no matter what, I am living my life the way that I want to live it, living it as a person with strength, not weakness, just because I had a weak point in my life. So now, with the new year coming, I am reborn, and I'm going to continue to grow and But the main thing is I'm going to really put myself first. Um, and live my life with asthma. And I hope that I can share my experience the best that I can. Even though it's such a strange place to be in. Knowing that I have sort of this disability in my life that I have to shift my life for my health um, but I just want to close off because I'm pretty sure I've, ta I've talked for a long time and my nose is all stuffy now and Steve's licking himself but I encourage every one of you to if you haven't this past year I know that with um, COVID and everything, it's been hard to really, like, live life for yourself or to live life in general. So for the new year, I want to inspire you guys to really put yourself first, really take care of yourself, um, and uh, if your gut is telling you not to do it, don't do it. And if your gut is telling you, this is what I want to do, freaking do it. So with that, take care. Love you all.